I recently had moved to Porterville with my wife and my children. When I got to Porterville, I still had this addiction. You know, I was still trying to make ends meet. We had been off and on for, for some time. With problems, you know, the problems that come with addiction and, and just sweeping things under the rug. And uh, I never really took care of none of them issues that I had going on in my life. It all came crashing down on my head when, uh, when she left. She left with my children. I was there waiting, thinking she was coming back. Still using. It really hit the fan when, uh, when I got this, this knock on the door. And me being a parolee, ex-parolee, I knew that knock. That was a crazy knock too, you know? And I remember, I remember like it was yesterday, you know? And I had the pipe in my hand when they knocked. It just made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. It stood straight, you know? Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, wow, you know? And I, I remember saying, who is it? And they said, Tulare County Sheriff. And, you know, I casually walked over to the dresser and just slid it underneath and opened it up. I got enough care in the world. <laughs> I wasn't on parole anymore, so and I, I wasn't doing no crime, so I opened the door and they had a paper in their hands. This is a, a move out order. I remember being in the days and uh, I had a duffel bag and a backpack and I just started throwing dirty laundry in there, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was just trying to get out of there myself before they made a reason to haul me off, you know. And just within a matter of minutes, man, I was, I was homeless. I'm 37 years old. And, you know, I told myself I'm getting into a program. I picked by studying because I didn't want to be in Porterville, but I knew I had to be close to my kids. And I was like, I seen my civil rescue mission. I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that one. That's, that's for, for the homeless. You know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't want to do it, man. For a long time, man, I, I didn't surrender. I, yeah, I just. I felt like a black cloud was following me around. There were some people around here that I felt the love, man. Even the people in the office, you know? I felt unworthy. I felt like I'm gonna be judged, you know? I'm a gang member, a drug dealer, drug user. I felt like I belonged, you know? And, uh, you know, they helped me to uh, file all kinds of paperwork to get the wheels rolling on getting vis visitations and uh, that, 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 that cloud has lifted and I, I have hope and I have hope for a future, you know, and my kids love being around me. I just, and I got a verse that uh, I'm going to put Kirk on blast. <laughs> Kirk Mills shared with me and uh, it's been with me the whole time I've been here. Then the angel showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. The accuser Satan was there at the angel's right hand making accusations against Joshua. And the Lord said to Satan, I, the Lord, reject your accusations, Satan. Yes, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebukes you. This man is like a burning stick that has been snatched from the fire. Joshua's clothing was filthy as he stood there before the angel. So the angel said to the other standing there, take off his filthy clothes and turning to Joshua, he said, See, I have taken away your sins, and now I am giving you these fine new clothes. You know, have you ever been to a bonfire or a campfire where you snatch that stick and throw it to the side and it's still smoking? That was me when I got here, man. That's all of us. I wasn't doing so hot in school. Um, and my dad decided to go ahead and have me go through the proficiency exam. Uh, so I got done with high school at the age of 15. I had skipped seventh grade because again, I was having trouble in school with the people around me. They weren't exactly the most understanding and I didn't know how to cope with that at the time. I, I found the only way that I know how to go ahead and deal with my problem and that was eating. I got up to 350 pounds by the end of my 
my run. And so uh, I thought long and hard and I thought that I don't want to be alive anymore. I don't, there's a bed that I've made that I don't feel like I can sleep in. So I decided to go ahead and commit suicide. As I was getting ready, the chair, I was gonna try to hang myself. The chair underneath me fell over without me knocking it down before I was ready. And so I was struggling for a good five, 10 seconds. Uh, I got back on the chair because as I was hanging down, I heard this voice in my head. You don't want this. This isn't for you. This isn't gonna work. And so I ended up crying for about an hour just in a ball telling myself, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this. So my parents didn't tell, talk to me until the next day about it, and you know, I was forward and up, you know, I was forward about it, and they decided, you know, with me saying that I tried to commit suicide to go ahead and get me psychologically evaluated. So uh, I started to go to a psychiatrist. Um, I honestly think that it wasn't helping and I was still having problems in school. I was still having problems in with myself. I was in, I was still eating horribly, even with any psychi psychological help. And it got to the point where my dad and my mom had enough of me. So on May 25th of 2015, I came up to Visalia. My dad dropped me off at the rescue mission and said, so long. That was, a very painful experience because I thought like in two days he'd come back and say come home he never did about a weekend it sunk into me that this is life now and that was very scary at the same time I felt freedom you know I wasn't having to deal with anything I could do whatever I wanted and then I enjoyed that for about a month two months and then it started to settle in what next so my birthday rolled around and I said, and I prayed to God, I said, God, show me which direction you want me to go. If I don't find anything in the next two weeks, some way to get my, get an extension, I'll go on the program. Nothing came up and I ended up in front of Scott's desk and I did, I started my first day at the rescue mission in the Life Change Academy. It's been the best decision I've made in the past decade and that's saying a lot not something I was expecting I wasn't expecting for me to grow this much I wasn't expecting to find out so much about myself figure out what had me there and along the way find God and you know I don't think find God is the right term I think God finally got through to me this is what really happened Um, I'll just start my story um, back when I was in juvie this last time. Um, I was on a on a real bad one. I was 160 pounds when I went in. I was spun out of my mind and just nothing. I wasn't right at the time, so um, I ended up going into the holding cell and everything. And while I was coming down, I was talking to all these different voices in my head and stuff, and they were kind of auditory. I felt like it was right there you know that so I was talking to him and everything but um, one thing led to another I was talking to him they asked me to sell my soul and everything so I agreed to it and they told me that they're gonna take my mother away but um, the main gist of that is that's when I first came to God and you know try to repent and everything I started going to the Sunday um, chapels there in the juvie but, um, you know, I was already planning on once I got out of that place to just go back to the same old routine, you know, smoke weed, drink, and go party with my friends and everything. Um, so I started doing, once I got out, that I immediately jumped back into the mix and was smoking dope and just, you know, things weren't going right. I was still wasn't right in my head. I was still quiet and, you know, people were just kind of like pushing me away. And um, I went off and on for two years 
And during that two years, actually, um, I went to go smoke with this one guy, and he ended up leasing the meth with PCP, cocaine, barbiturates, benzos, like a couple different drugs and everything. So um, I ended up tripping out and seeing basically the unseen world that I, that we fight. And that's what I think it was. But um, I ended up losing all five of my fingernails. Um, I, was, I wasn't right after that. I cursed God out, you know, cursed his name. Didn't believe in him anymore, didn't have hope. I blamed him for everything. And he, looking back on it now, I say that he was putting me through it just to leave me here. Because one day I just got tired of it all and finally went to court to handle the drug charge that I picked up during that time. And um, they asked me if there was any other program that I can go to. So I told him about the Visalia Rescue Mission and um, how the classes were free and how I have a year to stay here and get clean. So they let me come here. Me coming to this program and everything, my mom says that helped her out a lot because now she she tries to follow in the footsteps that I'm going in. How does that make you feel? Um, joy. Makes me feel happy. You know? I can't do that for somebody, especially my mom, knowing what she went through and everything. Then with this court thing, I just paid my um, my fees off yesterday, and then the misdemeanor is going to be wiped off my record. So I feel like I'm leaving that all behind. Like it's going to be wiped from my memory, kind of. <laughs> you know, all the bad that happened too during during when it happened. I believe God God saved me. It says in the Bible, nobody, no one else can have your soul except for me. You know, so reading that it gave me comfort.